All right. Uh, yep. This is the San Andreas Fault. It comes through right through there. And I'll tell you why I'm hesitating in a second. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. <laughs> All right. I ran over the side of the road. You get this view of the San Andreas Fault. Here's one long scarp, marshy, saggy area. And it just runs northwest that way. Over here is a large pressure ridge. But over here, there's a rattlesnake. And yeah, I gotta go. Okay, and here, the San Andreas Fault comes through that notch in that hill. Now mind you, this is the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, similar to the Calaveras Fault. It is always moving here. A few millimeters per year. And then we come to Route 25, where the fault crosses the road right here. And look. The road is being pulled apart. Now they're constantly having to repaint these lines. You can see the old lines because so much movement is occurring here. These were only repainted a few years ago and we're already getting noticeable movement. It's a good finger width. This one here is probably the most impressive. Whoop. Whoop. Once again on this wacky and crazy planet that we live on, the San Andreas Fault. That would be the North American plate. And that would be the Pacific plate. The interface where the two plates are rearranging themselves. I don't know where the heck I am. I'm somewhere in the middle of nowhere. But it's phenomenally gorgeous here. I almost got bit by a snake a few minutes ago. But I'm good. So, enjoy. So just to give you some context, the San Andreas Fault runs right through here. Now mind you, it is full of parallel faults, it is full of uh, linear features that are adjacent to the main trace, but here's a really clear example. You can see that these trees are just following it. There's some sag ponds. So the first stop in the video was right here. There's this sort of uh, abandoned uh, segment of the road. Or it looks like they started to connect it here and then said, screw it, let's go around for some reason. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, there's some great stuff here. Uh, really pulverized serpentinites and different things mixed together. I was in a rush though, so one of these days I'll go back. So here is that linear scarp uh, ridge. Here's the saggy, the marsh that I pointed out. It is a 
segment of the fault that is pulling apart. So if the fault was moving this way and bent slightly to the right, it will open up here. Remember this side is moving this way. This side is moving this way. Pressure on the flank of the fault pushed up this hill. So nice pressure ridge here. And somewhere off to the side right over here was that rattlesnake which scared the crap out of me moments before I started uh, recording. I was pretty close to it. It was a very polite snake and I was very fortunate that he decided to rattle and scare me off because I was well within striking distance. So that's the first stop. Zoom out, give you context. San Andreas Fault runs right through here. And then the second place I went to is right here. Now you can see, you can't really see. This is really interesting how when the fault line moves very slowly, the topography of the region um, in some areas almost looks unaffected but there are definite indicators for instance right here you have the main trace this is where the bulk of the movement is occurring you've got this uh, scarp right here it just continues on but the uh, fractures in the road are right here and you can see how much they've repaired this road. And you can see how wide the deformation is, wide of an area. And looks like somebody else has been there too. I'm definitely not the first. So the fault comes through here, through this saddle in the mountain. Really, it's probably as wide as this whole thing, but it has uh, a very narrow zone where most of the movement occurs. So I managed to take a few shots. Uh, I've already edited them. But I'm going to run through my settings with you real fast. I took this and then I was like, well, I'm pretty stupid. You're supposed to put the center line of the road in the center of the photo. It still seems somewhat off here, but this photo is a keeper because right here. So you can see exactly where the fault crosses the road in a uh, sort of topographic sense. And you can see how the road sort of bends a little bit to the right. So the fault comes through here, sort of at an angle, right through here. So this portion of the road is moving down this way. This portion of the road is moving down this way. And I've got it right where the movement is occurring. So I wanted to preserve these wispy cloud layer details. It was pretty much right at sunset when I got here. The light was just inching past that awesome range, past golden hour or maybe towards the end of golden hour. Uh, so I kicked up highlights, I kicked up shadows, I kicked up the uh, whites, and I turned down the darks, the blacks, just a little bit. Texture was not too concerned about. I wanted a fair bit of clarity in this picture. And I gave it a good healthy dose of vibrance, but I turned down the saturation. And I 
nudged around orange and yellow so I can get this sort of uh, sunset color going on. So that's that one. And for this one, shallow depth of field to display this uh, cracking in the road. This one I turned down highlights, turned up shadows, turned up the, the blacks really high. See where I was, see where I ended up. Might make sense to you. Don't really care too much about texture on this. We know it's a road. We know what a road, a paved road. We know what asphalt looks like. So I think I was at number five. Clarity. I wanted a good bit of clarity here. It's just obviously too much looks, you know, stupid. But I want to give it a good good dose of clarity. I want to bring it out a little so you can see the fault is just demolishing this uh, portion of the road. It's my curves. This is actually from a little farther down the road crosses the fault again. Uh, I'll show you again real quick where that is. It's like right over here. Somewhere in this area. But over there the road's been repaired more recently. You can see where it was repaired. Even though it was repaired, it's still beginning to fracture apart. Some gashes opening up there. And here's a panoramic view of that fault scarp in the distance. Takes a second to uh, clear up, so. Here is the actual San Andreas Fault uh, main strand uh, where the movement is happening right now, a few millimeters per year. And it's sort of paralleling the road at this point. But that's where the human made structures are getting deformed well, here's one from that uh, abandoned segment of the road cut these are in my opinion uh, utter failures as far as saying, hey, look what I shot. But there's some cool stuff here. Uh, you can see actual slicken lines on these rocks. Let's see if I can turn it up. But yeah, it's just terrible. It's terrible. I shouldn't even be showing you this. But you can see where the rocks were subject to uh, actual faulting in association with the San Andreas Fall. That's a great one. Slick and lines. But uh, the bulk of the interesting stuff was down here. And this is somewhat of a more artsy shot than a scientific display. But 
that's how it came out. These will be uploaded soon to my Instagram, The Rocktographer. Alrighty.